was about in 2003 when I was originally diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I had gone through quite a bit with my mother. She would look at me, but she didn't know who I was. When things started happening to me, I, <laughs> I was very, very nervous. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia to afflict the elderly. Right now, there are 5.3 million Americans that are affected by Alzheimer's disease. Actually, we were very uh, skeptical that Alzheimer's disease would be a disorder that could be treated by stem cells. We sought to find out whether stem cells might be able to alleviate some of the cognitive deficits that occur in an animal model of Alzheimer's disease. And we chose to do this in very old animals that had a lot of pathology. And one of the main reasons we did this is that when a patient first is diagnosed with Alzheimer's, they actually have a lot of pathology in their brain. So we really need a treatment that can have an effect in patients when they're first diagnosed. And what we did was we decided to implant neural stem cells into the hippocampus, which is one of the most important structures for learning and memory. And we put it, the stem cells bilaterally into both sides of the brain and waited a month and then reinvestigated the memory performances of these mice. And what we found was the animals that have received the stem cells we're now performing as well as our normal mice on behavioral tests that were designed to determine whether or not the mice had uh, learning and memory deficits. So in Alzheimer's there's a number of pathologies that occur. You have accumulation of a protein called beta amyloid, which many scientists believe is, is the ultimate cause of Alzheimer's disease. You also have a second pathology that are called neurofibrillary tangles, which is an accumulation of another protein in brain cells. Besides the plaques and tangles, there are a lot of other changes that occur in the Alzheimer's disease brain. Perhaps one of the most significant is that the brain starts to lose the connections that its neurons make onto each other. And it turns out that one of the best correlates of the extent of dementia that a patient experiences is not the number of plaques and tangles they have in the brain, but the amount of synapse loss that they have. And we found that the animals that received the stem cells had substantially more of these synapses, these connections between the neurons. It was on the order of about a 75% increase in the number of these connections. And so that correlates with what we're seeing in the cognition and makes sense as a potential explanation for why these animals have improved memory. One important question we needed to know is whether the stem cells had any effect on the plaque and tangle pathology that we know occurs in Alzheimer's. And it turns out the cells have no effect to that pathology. And one of the interesting things about this is, is that most of the therapies that are being pursued for Alzheimer's try to target those pathologies. And so far, they've been unsuccessful. We want to be able to translate this into a human therapy. We need to evaluate human cells. So we were very fortunate in being one of the recipients of the CIRM Early Translation Award. Um, and we have assembled a team of outstanding investigators throughout the state of California. And we will be evaluating different human cells and determining whether or not they are able to be effective at reversing the cognitive loss that we see in our animal models of Alzheimer's disease. It's very gratifying to see that some work that you do in the laboratory can ultimately trans be translated and have some benefit for human society.